Hello everyone. Recently Azure OpenAI announced a feature called AI Assistants, which works for us based on given instructions. So let's say we have created an assistant and we gave some instruction and it will just go through the instructions and provide us the required response. And if you have already heard about uh, AI Assistant from OpenAI, then there is nothing much to know about this here because the underlying technology or the concept between Azure OpenAI Assistant API and OpenAI Assistant API is exactly the same. I have already created a video on that approx two months back and in these two videos you will get to know how OpenAI, OpenAI's Assistant API works, how you can call your functions from Assistant API. So Watching this video will give you pretty much good idea because in this video I am not going to cover the theoretical part of it but we'll just touch upon few of the most important concepts which we need to know in order to get started. And these key concepts are like what is thread, what is message, run as well as what is this run step. So if you are aware of these four things then it would be very easy for you to go ahead and develop your applications. So let's talk about the very first one, which is thread. So a thread represents a conversation between an assistant and a user. So whenever you start a conversation, you will create a thread and all the subsequent messages which are exchanged between these two parties will be associated to the same thread. And in a nutshell, if you will see, threads are the one who help in maintaining the context as well as in tracking the, uh, tracking the, ongoing, uh, on, uh, tracking the ongoing discussion. Okay, uh, coming on to the message. So message can be anything like it could be a user query, it could be an instruction or any content which is exchanged between the user and the assistant. And the main purpose of messages is to build up the conversation history which is happening between an assistant and an user. The next thing is run. So every conversation between an assistant and an user is considered as a run. And obviously when I'm saying conversation is not just a one message which is exchanged, it is the entire set of messages which are exchanged between these two parties uh, starting from initiation until end. And the last one is the run steps. So now within a run, there are a lot many things which are happening. So a um, lot many different, different small tasks like understanding the input, generating the response, maintaining the context, and what not. So all these things fall under the run step. So this is the definition which I have picked up from the OpenAI documentation and it says an assistant operates with threads, communicates through messages and executes run composed of uh, run steps. Now the another thing is one assistant API or a application can support up to 128 tools. And if you have written your own custom tool that also you can utilize it using functions. So these are the things which you need to remember before, in order to get started. There are a lot many theoretical things behind this, but uh, you can walk through uh, the documentation and read about those. Next thing is why should we use Assistant API when we have built our applications using Langchain, Llama Index, and lot many things, then why do we need this? What is special in this Assistant API? So there are three different things which will differentiate Assistant API from the normal app building process. So the very first thing is automatic handling of context truncation. So like I mentioned earlier that the threads are the one which contains messages. And due to that, automatic handling is done very easily because whenever we are using a model, every model will have its own context limits or the token limits. So whenever our threads are going out of those limits, it will automatically truncate the older messages and just retain the new ones, which are the latest ones. So this thing is automatically handled in a very seamless fashion without the user knowing about it. Another thing is it allows different file formats. So it's not necessary that you can give only a text file as an input or just a CSV, it supports a lot many different files which you can give as an input. Another thing is the strong tooling which is one of the most impressive one. So what it says is uh, right now uh, this supports the tool for code generation, so code interpreter tool and this tool can generate the code for you like how this response was generated or how the model came uh, model got to know about this response. So that can be done using code interpreter. Another one is the knowledge retrieval tool, which will automatically chunk our data, embed our content in the files and 
perform every single thing which is required for our REC scenarios. And the function calling feature is the third one which allow us to call external functions. So let's say you have already written some functions wherein you are making call to a third party APIs or whatnot. Then you can use that function calling feature to uh, play with this assistant API. So these three are the major advantages over simple REC pipeline which you must have developed. Another thing to note is like this feature is still in preview. So definitely we cannot expect it to be available in every single region as of now. But if you are doing it today, it is available in Australia East, East US 2 and Sweden Central. So these three are the regions where you can experiment with this assistant API. So with this much of knowledge, let's go ahead and get started with our playground. So first I will cover the playground and then we will see how we can write few lines of code to replicate the same scenario in our VS code. So here I have already deployed a model and now I am on my Azure OpenAI Studio. Here you can see assistance which is in preview. Just click on that. And this run I have already done it so it is showing but in your case you may not see all these things. So let me go ahead and create a new one. Okay, so this is how your playground will look like. Here you need to provide some name. <clears throat> so this is the name of assistant. Then you need to provide instructions. So I will just put some instruction. You are a data analyst which can provide insights based on the data. Then you need to select which model you want. So I'm going with four because this is the one which I have deployed and on earlier versions it will not work. So this is available from GPT-4 with certain versions. Then you need to enable the code interpreter and here it is saying you can upload the files using this plus button and upload files to use with assistant tools and you can upload around up to 20 files with a max size of 512 MB each. Now, in my case, I have already downloaded a data set from the Kaggle, which talks about top 50 fast food chains in USA. So this is my sample data, which I have taken. Let's save it. And here we can go ahead and check. So let me ask. What this data is all about. And one thing you must have seen that when I saved this, one assistant ID is generated. Now this assistant ID is unique to this particular assistant. And on the top, you can see a thread ID. So this is a thread ID which got generated and it will be the same for all the conversations which we are having over here. Now let's have a look at this. The given data set provides details about various fast food chains and the data includes this. So the name of the food chain, the total system wide sales, the average sales. So all these are the things which are available in my uh, CSV file, which I have taken as an input. So let me ask a few more questions. Which, let's say which fast food chain has highest number of stores? So it should give the name of the store, which is having the highest number of branches across USA. So here you can see the highest number of stores is Subway with these many total units in 2021. So I can quickly ask another question. Can you generate a Python code? Oops. Can you show me the Python source code used to generate this data? Let's see what it will say. So I'm just asking it to generate the source code for our previous request, like how it arrived on the result as a subway. So it is generating a response. So this is the code. It is saying that this is the file they have read and the highest score was calculated something like this. 
and if you want to know you can read this description over here and it will give you give you better idea now let me show you one more last example so how we, how can we generate the graph out of it so i'm saying can you generate the graph depicting average sales of each of these fast food restaurants chains for year 2021 so now i'm expecting some graphical kind of thing which will tell me that okay this is the data we have for 2021 And on the right hand side, you can see that under the logs, it is saying what all REST API calls they are making for message, for run. So these you can see, and these are the ones which we are going to utilize when we will write a code. Okay, so this is the graph which you can see the horizontal bar depicting the average sales per unit. And this graph, you can use it or you can zoom it and see how it looks like. Now let's say this is what we are doing in a playground. Now if you want to do the same thing in VS Code or if you want to customize something, then how can you do that? That's what I'm going to show you next. So let's move on to VS Code. Here I have already written few lines of code. I have already imported required keys in my environment variables. So I will run this one. Then I'm importing all the required packages. Okay, so let me load these things. Okay, next thing what we are doing is the very first thing is uh, creating the client object. So as we are using Azure OpenAI, we need to pass in all these required parameters, API key, version, as well as the endpoint. And once these three are passed, we are good with our client object. And then we need to pass what all tools we are using. So in this case, we are just using the code interpreter, like how we have selected on the UI as well. Let me quickly show you. This is the one which we have selected. But if you have more tools, you can just add it in code itself or you can add it in the UI also. Then what we are saying is the very first thing we need is to upload the file. So this is the function for uploading a file. We are saying this is my client and this is the file path. So pick a file from here and using this particular client which we have just constructed, upload the file. Now, if you will have a look at this create function. So the purpose is either it could be fine tune or it could be assistance. So in this case, it would be assistance. So let me execute this cell as well. And then I'm saying under this folder store, which is on the left hand side, you can see there is a file named data set. So this is a file which we are going to use. You can put lot many files in that like how we have discussed about the limits. So in my case, I'm just taking one so that we can speed up the process. So it is reading the, let's see what it is saying. Client is not defined. So it is reading this directory, extracting the file out of it and then calling this upload function on each of these files. And once those files are uploaded, you will see that the file IDs are generated. Let me show you how it looks like. File ID is zero because like I said, we have only one file, so it would be just this particular file ID. Okay, so next thing what we need to do is we need to create assistant. So for assistant, you need to provide the name of your assistant, you need to provide the instruction, then what are the toolings you need to set and deployment name as well as the file IDs. So once it is done, we can utilize all these things and construct our very first thread. So this thread part is done. Next thing is how we want to format the message. So whenever we are getting the output, either it could be image or it could be text. So in our case, we have seen that few questions were text based, but the last one was a graph. So in that case, what you can do it. So no need to worry about this code. I just picked it from the GitHub, from the Azure OpenAI's documentation. You can find it there as well. So what here, here what we are doing is we are just checking if the message is of type which type of message is it a file or it is a text so if it is text then we are simply printing it but in case if it is of image type then we are first converting that to bytes and then adjusting those bytes and creating creating the image and then adjusting the size of the image based on our view where we are showing it so this function is just formatting the message nothing more we are doing here and if you will look at this portion so what we are doing we are iterating through every single message and doing the same activity until we reach the last message which is from the user and once we receive that we will just reverse the list so that we have our users message on the top 
okay then this the function is to process the message so what we are saying is we are first creating the messages so here we need to pass in thread id the role because user is doing that and the content which is user's query then we are saying create run instance for me so for creating a run instance we need thread id we need assistant id and if you have specific instructions then you can provide it over here and once our run is created we are good to go and execute this and what we need to do is like it's going to take few seconds so you cannot simply get your response from this run instance what you need to do is you need to keep checking whether the status is completed it is failed it is time out so there are five to six types of statuses which you can receive so you can just uh, for error handling you need to put in all of those here but i'm just taking the one which is having the completed but in case if you are building an application then you need to mention all of those possible uh, run status here okay so whenever status is completed i'm just grabbing it formatting the message and coming out of this loop but if our message uh, run is still going on then we need to wait for five seconds and then uh, retest it whether it is the status is completed or not so i will execute this function as well and this is the place where we are going to make a call so i'm saying what is what this data is all about and it should give us all those four or five things which we have seen here in our this playground so similar kind of response, not sure, maybe exactly, but yeah, it should be in the same line. So what this data is all about, and you can see that this is what we have received, and it is almost the same which we have seen in our playground. Now if I will go ahead and ask the, another question which is to generate graph. So it's going to take time because it needs to create the frame and then we need to convert it adjust the height and width so but ultimately it will generate the graph for us so i've just written it can you generate the graph but you can change it to very specific like can you get me a bar graph can you get me a line chart or whatever you want so this is the chart which got generated so i hope you got an idea what we are trying to achieve here and how we can utilize this code how we can utilize this code interpreter tool to get our assistant api work so do let me know in comments what do you feel about it and what are your use cases where you are going to use assistant api thanks for watching